Yeah, uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, well, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, so my uh, my paper is about information theoretically secure multi-party computation. So before I get into the into the problem, let me just remind you once more about uh, uh, secure computation. So just to fix notation and so on. Uh, we have n parties. Each of them has uh, uh, private inputs, and they want to compute some uh, some function. Uh, um, they, do, they want to do that uh, through a protocol where they communicate to each other. They have uh, secure channels between each uh, pair of parties. And then the, the security well, is captured by the, the notion of an adversary that corrupts a set some, it can corrupt some subsets of parties. And then it should not get the uh, information on the uh, uncorrupted uh, inputs or, or the uh, inputs of the uncorrupted uh, parties beyond what it is implied. But uh, the outputs and the corrupted inputs. And furthermore, it cannot uh, alter the, the computation of, of the function uh, except by changing the corrupted uh, inputs. So um, you also know that there are many ways of, of uh, coming up with protocols. Uh, um, there's garbling, there is uh, homomorphic uh, encryption, and so on. And then there's also secret sharing based multi party computation protocols. And uh, the way this uh, work usually is that um, you represent your function as an arithmetic circuit over certain finite fields, so basically a bunch of sums and products. And then uh, the parties uh, have some uh, linear secret sharing scheme over, over that same finite field that they use to uh, share their inputs at the beginning of the protocol. And then the computation goes by, uh, gate by gate uh, on, the, on the sharing. So, so they the parties are able to uh, compute the sharing of the output uh, given the sharing of the inputs in, in each gate. And then they can just uh, uh, reconstruct the output of the circuit. Now, when the gates are, are linear, then it's, uh, this is uh, very easy um, because they can, uh, the parties can compute locally uh, using the linearity of secret sharing scheme. They can compute locally the sharing of the output of the gate. When it is multi, uh, multiplicative, uh, then uh, well, it becomes a little bit more complicated, and then it depends on, on which protocol you are using. Um, yeah. So the motivation of this work is that um, many secret chain based multi party computation protocols actually require large finite fields to work. I'm not saying that all of them do. I mean, there, there are, of course, protocols for, uh, for small fields. But um, many of, of, of the efficient protocols work over, over large finite fields. And I have some examples. There are different manifestations of this. So uh, for example, in, in the information theoretical case, that is the, the one that we are going to, to talk about here. Um, well, if you are using Shamin's scheme, that you, which you do often, um, for example, in the protocol by Benor, Goldbach, and Vigderson, and many others that follow the same pattern, um, then you needs that the size of the finite field is at, is, uh, at least the number of, of parties. Um, there are other uh, techniques. For example, hyperinvertible matrices. This is uh, something, some object that was uh, introduced by Berliova and Hirt in 2008 uh, in a very efficient protocol that I will talk uh, more about later. Um, that also requires. Um, that the size of the field is, is, is uh, large for, for different reasons. Um, and so uh, actually, you need it to be at least two times the number of parties. Um, now, I, I want to mention some, some results uh, that we uh, found out. Um, it's, it's unrelated to the rest of the talk. But uh, we can actually uh, replace uh, this hyperinvertible hyper invertible uh, matrices by a notion that is a little bit weaker, that has a little bit re uh, weaker requirements, but it allows to obtain the same functionality. And, uh, and that notion actually only uh, requires constant size fields, but still with at least 64 elements. So if you are interested in this, you can, you can ask me later, um, but uh, I will not talk more about that. This, this is just a side result unrelated to what I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that um, um, you also need the field to be large in, in, in other types of protocols, for example, speeds, uh, computationally secure protocol. 
Uh, if you are using the message authentication codes, you are going to need that uh, the field is large because the probability that an adversary cheats and, and it's not uh, uh, caught is, is, is going to be inversely proportional to the size of the field. And uh, you saw some uh, other uh, manifestation of that in, in, the, in the talk uh, yesterday by, by Ariel, where depending on whether you have a large or a small finite field, you, you needed to do uh, in a different, uh, or you needed to use a different protocol. Um, yes, so, so uh, then the question is, is there any way that we can use these uh, protocols that work over large finite fields when actually we have that our function is more naturally represented as a circuit over a, a small field? So for example, say uh, comparison of, of bit strings or maybe, I don't know, set intersection, something like that. So um, I'm going to talk just uh, mainly about the binary field, uh, but our results just work for any small field. It's just uh, it's easier to talk about the binary field. Um, of course, one can always say, OK, uh, the field of two elements is uh, just uh, contained in any field of 2 to the k. Uh, so you just uh, take a, a power of 2 that is large enough and uh, so that you can use your, your, uh, your arithmetic protocol. And then, um, and then basically you just compute the same circuit um, with where your sums and products will now be in the extension field. You can do that. But uh, that seems wasteful because you are essentially uh, using m bits to represent what would be just one. So, um, then the question that we have is, can we get more out of this? And why, what do I mean by that? So basically, since we are anyway going to uh, work or use uh, uh, arithmetic uh, uh, protocol over, over a large finite field, then the question is whether we can use it to evaluate more than one instances, instance of the uh, binary circuit. OK, so we want to, in other words, embed uh, k parallel evaluations of the binary circuit into one of the circuit of, uh, over the large field. And of course, when we are doing this embedding, we don't want to uh, add too much complexity that uh, sort of uh, dwarfs the, the one by the, that you use for the protocol over the large field. So we are going to uh, be concerned here on, on, uh, about uh, communication complexity, by the way. So this is our question. And uh, what we, we did concretely uh, was to focus on the case of information theoretically perfectly secure multiparty computations. It's a no, no broadcast. And in, in that case, uh, the best uh, protocol, at least if you are going for the strongest adversary, is the one by uh, Berliova and, 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 and Heert in the, from 2008. Uh, so what they get is exactly this, here, this thing here. So um, they, uh, they are able to tolerate uh, uh, m minus 1 divided by 3 active corruptions, and that is optimal in, in this setting. And uh, the protocol has a communication complexity of O n uh, field elements per gate. Um, but it has the restriction that uh, the field has to uh, have at least two n parties. So um, what we did is to show that we can use that uh, protocol uh, in order to compute uh, log n evaluations of a, of a Boolean circuit. And so if you do that, uh, and again, uh, we are not going to increase too much the communication complexity while, while doing this embedding. And uh, if you do that, then uh, if you now count uh, how many uh, or how much information you are, you are sending, then it turns out that the communication complexity is uh, linear bits per, per gate in each instance. Okay? So we are uh, able to remove the limitation on the size of the field. But, uh, well, uh, at the cost of, of having to compute uh, log n evaluations of this, of this circuit. Okay, so that is the, the main result that we have. Um, now, you may be thinking at this point that uh, the way that we did it was 
by using packed secret sharing. But the point is that we cannot do that because if we do that, then we lose this uh, corruption tolerance uh, of uh, and, and third uh, parties. Uh, that will we, we will not be able to to uh, tolerate this optimal adversary anymore. Um, and in fact, we can even combine uh, our techniques uh, that, that I will explain with packed secret sharing. And if we do that, then we get uh, this other result where now we are not able to tolerate uh, an optimal adversary, but uh, we have an uh, amortized communication complexity of constant uh, bits uh, per gate in each instance. And now we need to evaluate uh, n log n um, circuits in order to get this because we are using this packed strategy. Okay, so um, now uh, let me explain how we did this. Uh, and uh, for now, we can just forget about uh, which specific uh, protocol we are using over the extension field. So this is the situation that we want to solve. Uh, we have a binary circuit, and uh, again, we want to evaluate it in k different sets of inputs that I, I uh, represent by the different colors here. Uh, now, if you think about it, uh, you could just think that you have a circuit that does uh, one evaluation uh, um, and your circuit, uh, the gates of your circuit just operate coordinate-wise in, in uh, vectors of k elements. So then your sums and products would be coordinate-wise. Um, and the resource that we have, the thing that we know how to do, is how to compute uh, an arithmetic circuit over a large field. So now, if the sort of algebraic structure of, of this large field was the same as the algebraic structure of a set of vectors over F2 with uh, coordinate-wise operations, then we would basically be done. I mean, we could just uh, use directly this, this protocol. Now, the problem is that this is not the case. So if you have your uh, vectors of, of length k over F2 and you consider the sum and product coordinate-wise, this doesn't have the same structure as the... As the uh, field of uh, degree k, because while the sums are essentially the same, so they are isomorphic as, as vector spaces, the products cannot be the same. In one case, you have divisors of zero, in the other, you don't. So uh, we cannot do that. They, they are not isomorphic as FQ algebras. That would be the way of saying this mathematically. Um, so the, be the, the next best thing that we can think of is using what we call reverse multiplication friendly embeddings. So this, what, what is this? This is a pair of functions. Uh, now one function takes vectors over F2 and, um, and outputs an element of a, of a field. And now the field has to be a little bit larger. It has degree uh, M. And the other map goes the other way around. And the condition is that in order to uh, compute the product coordinate-wise of, uh, of uh, two vectors, x and y, we can first apply this map phi, multiply them as field uh, elements, and then apply psi back. OK? Um, now, since uh, I said before that these two structures are not uh, isomorphic, then you can never have that psi and phi are the inverse of each other. But you have that phi is invertible, and this is uh, sort of important for our protocol. Um, so I want to say something about the, the history of this notion. Why do we call it first reverse multiplication-friendly embeddings? Well, we had the notion of multiplication-friendly embeddings. Uh, some, the, uh, some of the authors of this paper had this, uh, introduced this, this notion in, in, in crypto 2009 in a paper about uh, multiplicative secret sharing. Um, and, and that notion was just uh, the same as, as uh, I'm considering here, but with the roles of the field and, and the ring um, or the vector space over F2 swapped. Um, now, this notion has been uh, studied in, in mathematics uh, under the name of uh, bilinear multiplication algorithms. While the new notion that we are introducing seems to be studied much less. And uh, it is sort of um, natural because, uh, or, or the notion is, is actually not so natural because, I mean, 
you are uh, expressing um, some simple object, which is like you know F2 <coughs> products, uh, coordinate-wise products over F2, in terms of a more complicated notion, which is a product in, in a extension field. So it looks like it's upside down. Uh, we knew about this notion, and we could uh, use it to improve a little bit the, the construction in, in Crypto 09, but we never published it. Now, the, f the first um, authors that came up with an application for this notion were uh, Block, uh, Maggi, and, and Guyen in Crypto last year. Um, they didn't, in that paper, explicitly define this notion. They just used a construction for that. But um, now they, they, they have up uploaded a, a preprint, more or less at the same time that we got this, this paper accepted, where they explicitly define that and study this, this notion also. Um, their, uh, their application is, is a little bit uh, different uh, than ours. They are trying to uh, construct, or they, tr they construct uh, OTs from uh, one instantiation of oblivious linear evaluation over a large field. So the focus is a little bit different, uh, but it shows that this, this notion seems to be interesting uh, in a different uh, regime. So um, what about the constructions? So in order to get the results of, uh, of this paper, we need, that, um, we need to come up with uh, constructions of reverse multiplication friendly embeddings where the degree of the field is linear in the number of copies of F2 that you want to, to embed. And we can do that by means of algebraic geometry. And actually, mathematically, the, this notion and the one without the reverse part, so the multiplication friendly embeddings, they, they are not so, so different in the end, I mean, uh, when it comes to constructions. You can use the same techniques. Um, so you can use uh, algebraic geometry for this, but I wanted to also mention that uh, for quite large parameters, actually the best uh, thing that you can do is uh, still polynomial interpolation-based uh, constructions where you maybe have to uh, concatenate uh, two, uh, two of these uh, over, over some different uh, fields and so on. And for example, you could embed 99 uh, copies of F2 into a field of degree 325. And this is the best way you can do this is by, by uh, uh, polynomial interpolation. And, and there, is, there seems to be, it seems to be already quite large for any possible practical uh, purpose of this. So um, now, how do we use that? Or why is this notion important? So, so the point is that, uh, again, we, we want to compute uh, this, our circuit over a, over a, a Boolean uh, over a, yeah, Boolean field. So um, what the parties do is to embed their vector of inputs into an element of, a fi of, a, of the large finite field by applying phi. And then they will compute certain circuits with the protocol for the large, uh, for the large finite field. And then they will uh, retrieve the result back by applying the inverse of phi. Uh, now, what is this circuit here, C prime? Uh, you may think that it is the same as the one that we want to, to compute, as, as the Boolean one. But uh, it has some differences. And the main difference is that whenever you, in, in the Boolean case, you are going to multiply, you have a multiplication gate or an AND. In the case of the large extension field, you are going to multiply your, your inputs, but then apply this um, uh, concatenation of, of functions of psi and phi, where they come from the um, reverse multiplication friendly embedding. The idea of doing that is that what we want is that basically uh, at every point of the protocol, we, are, we, we have uh, Phi and, or sharing of phi encodings of the vectors that, that would be in, in, in the Boolean uh, circuit. And by doing this, this concatenation here, you have that um, if, uh, if you have uh, encodings of A and B by phi, and these are vectors, then um, this will map uh, that into an encoding of the component-wise product of A and B, and that's because of the properties of, of uh, reverse multiplication friendly embeddings. 
So this is, uh, this is how we modify the circuit. But, um, but then we have two obstacles, so, because now we have introduced a new gate. What is this phi composed with psi uh, gate? How do we compute that? If it was uh, linear over the large field, then we could just locally, I mean, the particles could just locally com compute that, and then it wouldn't increase the complexity. But um, the problem is it's not linear over the large field. It's linear over the base field F2. And that is a, that is a problem. And that already happens even for passive uh, adversaries. Um, another problem is uh, how do we guarantee that actually the, the, the parties input encodings by phi? Because the image of phi is actually not the full uh, field, the full extension field. And the protocol over, over that field doesn't care what it gets. I mean, doesn't get, care if it gets an encoding by phi or, or it gets another element as long as it gets some element of the large field. So these two things are, are the ones that we have to solve. Um, also, uh, there's uh, some, some protocols also require uh, random elements of the large field, and we would maybe need that they are also encodings by phi. So, but that is more or less the same as the second problem. Um, now, I'm, I'm not going to give the, the details of how to solve this, uh, but just to say that we can reduce this into some other problem. Uh, and this uh, problem, I mean, we can redu reduce both of, of the problems that, that I mentioned before. And this is uh, the following problem. We have a subspace V, and uh, this subspace uh, is, yeah, I mean, contains uh, vectors of L coordinates uh, in, in, in the extension field, but it's only linear over the base field, F2. And uh, now you want to create sharings of coordinates of a random element in V. And um, now, if you, if you know a little bit about this uh, Hirt and Ber or -Hirt, uh, protocol, you, you think that uh, we are going to use hyperinvertible matrices, and we actually are. But uh, the problem is that they don't work directly, because uh, in order to do that, you would need that V is a F2 to the M linear subspace, and it's only linear over the base field. So in order to solve that, we need to introduce some other technique which is to apply these hyperinvertible matrices to some related vector space, which is the tensor product of uh, the extension field with V. This is a vector space over the large field, and so we can create a um, um, series of random elements there. And you may think, OK, but that's not what you wanted. And so uh, why do you do that? Well, the thing is that actually this uh, um, tensor product or the elements can be seen as, as uh, vector, vectors of m components in V. So basically, you are just creating random elements in your, uh, in your subspace, in, in the sub subspace uh, V, but in batches of m elements. So that is uh, how we solve that, that, uh, that problem. And then this, this gives us the solution for, for the problems before. Every, all, this, all of this would be done in the preprocessing phase. Um, OK, so I, I, of course, don't have my, uh, time for more details. So I just uh, finish by saying that, yeah, we have introduced uh, a methodology to just take a, a protocol, a multiparty computation protocol that works over the uh, large field and uh, use it to evaluate several instances of, uh, of a Boolean circuit, a circuit of a small field. Then we, we got this result that we can uh, remove the limitation on, on, on the size of the field in, in Berlioz and here. And um, the main technical handle is this uh, reverse multiplication friendly embeddings, although we also use this other tricks with uh, the tensor product and so on, which we think is maybe has uh, independent interest. And I guess uh, natural future work is how to extend these techniques to other, to other models. Of course, the, the point is probably it can be done. The, pro the, 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 the point is uh, how much complexity, I mean, to get the right complexity and, and uh, not because we need to add this, all these extra steps, so they should not add uh, uh, more complexity than, than necessary. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of the talk. You have questions? <laughs>